What's going on guys? This is Vinyl like Puma, back with another Borderlands 1 video, and today I figured it might be fun to take a look at Lilith and go over what I think is the best build or best skill setup for her for both solo and potentially even co-op play. Now before we start, my goal here is to put together a character spec that provides great flexibility with class mod use and plays on and improves what Lilith is good at, which tends to be using elemental weapons, SMGs, and of course her action skill, which is phase walk. With this in mind, and because I'm going for greater flexibility, you may find that in a few cases that a different skill point distribution might be more fine-tuned for the class mod you're using. However, I think you'll find that with this build slash skill setup, you're going to be able to use most of Lilith's better class mods pretty well. Also, I'm not going to focus as much on guns and gear for this video. I'll definitely talk about certain items here and there when it's appropriate, but for the most part, I'm going to be focusing on what skills to pick and why. As always, feel free to leave a like if you liked this video and also leave your thoughts in the comments section below, but without further ado, let's just jump in and go over the skill setup. As a quick overview, you can see that I've pretty much gone ahead and gotten all of the capstone skills and maxed them out. While you might be able to get by without maxing each one out, I think you'll find that all three skills are pretty great and that it's pretty difficult to go wrong with each. After all, the controller tree's mind game skill provides the player with the ability to potentially daze enemies with each bullet you fire. Phoenix is really good since it basically gives you a fire aura that can burn enemies as well as a certain percentage base chance to fire shots that don't consume ammo. And finally, you have phase strike, which deals a surprising amount of melee damage when coming out of phase lock. Ultimately though, I think you're going to find that all of the capstones on Lilith are pretty great and that it's hard to go wrong with them. The question however is, how do you get to each of the capstones and let's start with the controller tree. When it comes to tier 1, you have the choice between D.Va, which is a skill that just boosts shield capacity and striking, which is a skill that allows melee attacks to have a certain percent chance to daze enemies. Personally, I'm not going to be using melee other than when I leave face lock, so I won't necessarily need the ability to daze enemies with melee. So in this tier, D.Va is ultimately going to win out, as it's a nice passive boost that you could benefit from 100% of the time. This brings us to tier 2, which allows you to choose between inner glow and dramatic entrance. Like D.Va, Inner Glow is a skill that's great for additional survivability, as you can simply pop off a face lock when you're in trouble and then regenerate health. Dramatic Entrance is alright, however, I think you'll find that, like Striking, it tends to work best when you're up close. That, and while we are going to be really taking advantage of Lilith's excellent cooldown, which means you can use Phase Blast more, I think Inner Glow is simply better and more reliable defensively than Dramatic Entrance is offensively. Feel free to experiment, but I find I prefer Inner Glow in this case. And finally, we have Tier 3, which contains Hard to Get and Girl Power. Honestly, both of these skills are pretty nice as having the phase walk cooldown reduction provided by hard to get or the shield regeneration provided by girl power is pretty useful. I ultimately went with hard to get here since it optimizes phase walk and having that additional cooldown is really useful, but I could definitely recommend girl power as well, especially if you find you have additional skill points left over to spend. This brings us of course to Mind Games, which of the three capstones, I think you could agree that this one doesn't necessarily need to be maxed out. Granted, I've done that here, but if you wanted, I think you could put three points here and then take the remainder and place them elsewhere if you really wanted to. Ultimately, I think it's going to depend on what weapons you use, where if you have something with high fire rate and high projectile count, you may not necessarily need maximum daze chance, but in general, just experiment and see what works for you. So I guess in summary, while you may find you can get use out of some of the more close quarters daze skills like dramatic entrance and striking, I tend to like to pick off enemies from a distance and use phase lock a little more defensively. Again, feel free to experiment, but let's move on to our next major skill tree, which is the Elemental one. For Tier 1, you have the choice between Quicksilver and Spark. Both of these skills are pretty decent, and you may find that Spark is good for allowing weapons with already low elemental proc chance to do so more often. 
However, and as you get to later parts of the game and acquire some of the better Malawan legendaries like the Hellfire SMG, these weapons already have pretty high proc chance already. Thus, and in this instance, you may find that Quicksilver is the better choice for Tier 1 since it increases the fire rate of all weapons passively, which can yield a nice DPS boost overall. Transitioning to Tier 2, you have Resilience and Radiance, with the former increasing your elemental resistances, with Radiance allowing you to deal shock damage to nearby enemies while phase walking. While not a bad skill, I think Resilience is simply outperformed by the likes of Silent Resolve, which we'll be discussing later on in this video, while Radiance is just a nice skill that adds an additional shock damage over time to enemies. So, I'm going to ultimately recommend that you go with Radiance for Tier 2. This of course brings us to Elemental's two Tier 3 skills, which are Venom and Intuition. While having a corrosive effect added to your melee attacks isn't necessarily bad and you can apply corrosive status effects to enemies, Intuition is overall better in my opinion. Not only is the movement speed really useful provided you activate Phase Walk, but the additional XP gain can be nice while you're leveling. So when it comes to Tier 3, I'm going to go with the intuitive choice, which is Intuition. And then we arrive at Phoenix, which in my humble opinion is one of Lilith's best skills. Not only does this activate a Fire Aura, which can inflict status effects onto other enemies and stacks pretty well with Radiance, but this skill also allows the player to potentially fire shots that don't consume ammo which is extremely useful in pretty much any Borderlands game, since it can artificially increase your gun's magazine size under sustained fire. In the end, while skills such as Resilience, Spark, and Venom aren't necessarily bad, I think you can easily get by without them. Feel free to experiment if you plan on going for more of a melee playstyle, but let's move on to the Assassin Tree. Both of the Tier 1 skills here are pretty nice, however, like I mentioned earlier with Resilience, Silent Resolve is simply better as it provides better damage resistance overall. Silent Resolve unfortunately only works provided you exit phase lock while Slayer's effects are passive, but since we're building around phase lock for this build, it stands to reason that Silent Resolve will get used plenty. That, and provided you combine Silent Resolve with a really bulky shield, you might be surprised just how much damage you can tank. But between both of these skills, I think you'll find that Silent Resolve is probably the better skill overall. Moving on to Assassin Tier 2, and we have both Enforcer and Hit and Run. Enforcer is a nice skill to have provided you're doing a lot of sniping, since the accuracy and bullet damage increases can improve your overall damage output. However, I'm going to have to go with Hit and Run, primarily for the improvements to the duration of your phase walk. At 5 out of 5, this will bring your total phase walk duration to 10 seconds, which is really good. While the melee bonus is okay and will help with phase strike, which we'll be going over in a moment, it's really the phase walk duration that we're after here since it's a 66% improvement. So with that in mind, I don't think I can recommend Enforcer. But this brings us to Tier 3 with Blackout and High Velocity. You'll notice that I have both of these selected, however, if you can only have one, I would recommend Blackout as it reduces cooldown upon defeating enemies. This cooldown reduction is 6 seconds per defeated enemy, which is extremely useful and when you combine this with hard to get, you can basically enter, exit, and then re-enter phase walk very quickly. As for high velocity, I'd say it's a pretty good skill as the bullet velocity and damage improvements can improve your range and damage with all weapons, but I do think of the two, Blackout is simply better. And for our final skill to go over, we have Phase Strike, which is a surprisingly powerful capstone and I would recommend you max it out. While you can only do it once per phase walk, the melee damage bonus can get as high as 800% at 5 out of 5, which yields a surprising amount of damage on melee strikes. Given how we've really optimized a round phase walk, you should be able to pull this ability off fairly frequently. After all, blackout and hard to get feed into the rate at which you can phase walk, while hit and run improves both the length of phase walk while adding some additional damage. I think I find it's a pretty good system and that all of these skills work pretty well in concert with one another. 
like I've said before, do try and experiment, as I think this tree is definitely ripe for it. But for now, I'm going to talk about our leftover skill points. Assuming you've followed everything I've shown here, that leaves you with about 4 extra points. While I've placed these into high velocity, I'd say you could really place these anywhere. On top of that, and depending on what weapons you're using, you can gain an additional 1 or 2 points by specking only 3 out of 5 into mind games, which you can also use to place in other skills. As far as what skills I'd recommend, I'd go with either high velocity or girl power. Then again, maybe if you wanted to go for more of a melee route and improve phase strike, you could go with Venom. As I've said before, it's up to you if you want to experiment, but you can really achieve a surprising amount of flexibility here, which I suppose we'll go over now. Specking this way allows you to use all three of the Siren's elemental class mods. For example, the Firefly Calm boosts Phoenix and Diva, which are skills that we've specced into, in addition to Spark, which you can potentially do without. Meanwhile, the Plague Bear Calm boosts Inner Glow and Mind Games, which we've specced into, along with Venom. And depending on how you allocate those leftover points, you could potentially get a nice compatibility with the Plague Bear Calm. And finally, there's the Tempest Calm, which boosts Radiance and Silent Resolve, which we've specced into, in addition to Slayer. Overall, I'd say you're getting pretty good coverage here as all of these comms are really good for Lilith, and you can swap to each without really having to respect all that much. This build also works fairly well with the Desirable Mercenary comm as well. While you may need to move around some of your leftover points to get the boosts to both high velocity and girl power, I'd say it might be worth it for the additional SMG damage and potential SMG ammo regen. That, and I also think you'll find that other Siren class mods like the Catalyst, Defender, Iridian Warrior, Doll Professional, and Meluan Specialist are all compatible with this particular skill setup, and the secondary boosts provided by each have their own uses. That said though, I will admit that this skill spec may not work as great with the Spectrecom as a more dedicated skill spec would. You can make it work by using some of your leftover points, but you may find you want all 5 out of 5s in Slayer, Enforcer, and High Velocity to really get the most damage on criticals. There's also the Tormentor Com, but since that's more of a co-op based class mod anyway, I think you can get by without it. At the end of the day, I'd say it's pretty hard to go wrong with this particular setup. You may find that other skill point distributions are better for more specific builds if you want to use melee or do a lot of sniping, but for general use and for the most compatibility, I'd say you really can't go wrong here. After all, you can use almost every class mod fairly well, and if you're concerned about not getting all of the skill boost you want, you can always tweak this setup a little so you can cover that last skill you might need with some of the leftover points. This also gives you a surprising amount of flexibility with gear setups as well. Granted, you may be more confined to certain weapon types than others due to Lilith's available manufacturer loyalties as well as her affinity for SMGs or snipers via the Mercenary or Spectre comms, but you can get a lot of elemental weapons to work pretty well too. Simply throw on a corresponding Firefly, Tempest, or Plague Bearer class mod, and you're pretty much good to go. Alternatively, and if you want better defense, you can simply equip a defender comm, maybe spec for girl power and get a really high durability shield, and again, you're pretty much good to go. In the end, you should find there are a lot of different things you can do that work surprisingly well with this skill setup, and I hope you get a lot of use out of it. Otherwise guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. How do you guys put together your skill trees when you're playing as Lilith? Does it look like this, or do you all do something different? Feel free to let everyone know in the comments section below, and as always, like this video if you liked it, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.